Right. Good afternoon once again, and uh, welcome to today's session of our revision towards uh, this year's entrance examination, 8th September. Before we start, uh, what I intend to discuss with you, uh, just one question uh, for now. And then uh, in the evening, if I have the time, I'll come online. If you're able to join me, then you join me. Uh, but before we discuss that question, I want to discuss with you now. Let me remind you that uh, the reason for, uh, just a second, I think my daughter is calling. Era, as a queer come. Hey, also, uh, welcome back from school. Good. I'm, I'm teaching online. The, this is a law school in terms of mission people, so I can record you, okay? All right. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, so uh, just to get the, this announcement uh, across, some of the, you know, the topics are essentially the same. And for that matter, where I have done extensive discussion on the matter, I do not consider it necessary to repeat myself, uh, especially so when uh, there are recordings of what I did. And that is why i not too excited to be treating a lot of uh, full topics as I used to do. So I spent a bit of time yesterday uh, trying to go into the archives on the, the Ghana Law TV and, and try to re retrieve uh, as many uh, as I could so that in case uh, you want to assist yourself, maybe you want to have a benefit of discussion of a particular topic that you've done and so on uh, last year and then the previous year and this year, you can always do that. So that is the idea. So when I come uh, live now, I just do just a targeted uh, discussion. I just raise maybe like a small issue. I discuss it. And if you have some other questions, we deal with it. Rather than just doing the you know the the, the what they call it, the full dress revision approach because the previous recordings on the topics are available and they are the same. Okay, so having said that, um, this afternoon I like to discuss a question which they presented in 2018 uh, to you, and the question is this: uh, as in the, if you look at the 2018 uh, paper. Uh, unless the version I have is not correct, but if it's correct, then this was that in the third question uh, in 2018. Admittedly, uh, that was the time that uh, they used to do the MCQ part A or session A, and then the, they give you about two or three questions uh, answer, and then uh, one or two in the part B. So here, the questions were three, and then the third question, uh, is what I have just quoted above, and I quote it now again. The jury system is an anachronism, gan is an anachronism, Ghana's judicial system can ill afford. Do you agree with this proposition? Give reasons for your answer. What recommendations, if any, will you make to reform the current system? Good. Yeah, so this is a question uh, which I think uh, was presented to your seniors. Those who are successful, I think they should be lawyers by now, because this is uh, about uh, how many, about five years now. So there must be a lawyer, uh, uh, you know, three years at the bar or two years at the bar. Good. So this is uh, what they had. And I find this question to be topical even now than at the time that they brought it. And of course, when you have done the general revision for each topic across the subjects, as I have previously encouraged you, another uh, wise thing to do is also be concerned about the topicality or relevance or currency. Like that is to say that across the same subjects, uh, what are uh, issues of current uh, interest? 
current importance or relevance, okay? Uh, so that you also pay attention to that. That is not to say that you focus only on uh, issues of uh, current relevance, no. You have done the general revision as I have previously uh, advised you, but then having done that, uh, you want to now uh, explore if there are some uh, particular uh, or selected areas uh, you want to give a bit more attention to. And in that respect, it will not be a bad idea if you were to actually uh, pay attention to uh, matters of uh, 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 recent or current uh, interests which uh, fall within the same subject area. So that is just a, a preliminary uh, uh, advice or suggestion I am uh, making to you uh, this afternoon. So now let's come back to this question. Uh, why uh, do I say that it is uh, relevant? If you'll be following discussion in the political circle, and in the Attorney General in particular, uh, of course, uh, going back even to uh, the various, uh, the, the bar conference, the various uh, law events, when speeches are given, you notice that the Minister of Justice will keep uh, uh, throwing hints that uh, he would like to uh, move for uh, significant uh, uh, no reforms in our criminal justice system. And uh, some have been done, uh, plea bargaining, you've seen it, uh, but that is what you're talking about now. Uh, now he mentioned the jury system and you notice how we have had some uh, you know, practical challenges with respect to how the jury system uh, works. And that provides uh, you know, motivation for a, a real look uh, to be given uh, at the system so as to reform it. And that is why, uh, as we speak now, there's a, a bill. Uh, and I think a part of the, 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 the material I've, I've, I've given, we'll be looking at briefly, and maybe snippets of that bill, uh, uh, to reform the criminal offenses procedure, uh, I mean, Crim uh, Act, Act uh, 30, and in particular, uh, those provisions relating to uh, the jury trial or the jury system. So uh, who knows, maybe if you are lucky and uh, you happen to have a luck shine on you and your examiner is probably interested in, even if not the exact wording of the question which came in 2018, to probably bring up something uh, like that, uh, that will be a, a good experience for you. Yeah, so on that note, I would like us to uh, give some thought to this uh, particular question. I know that uh, some of you, you have like a database of all alleged marking schemes and marking guides, uh, fake uh, marking schemes and all that, right? In your uh, 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 records. And for that matter, uh, when you see a question, in, instead of trying to understand the question and harness your own uh, uh, learning so far with respect to the, the topics relevant to the question so that you are able to uh, generate your own uh, natural response based upon your understanding, you close your mind and you just uh, busy yourself trying to memorize uh, what somebody has put together as an answer to a particular question. Well, I am not in that uh, uh, school. I want to just be very uh, natural in the sense that we've all learned the topic. So we are going to bring our various uh, ideas to bear on that. Now, if you have an essay question like this, is as you can see, you're, you're quite for them because the, the way the question is uh, uh, framed or formulated, is uh, pretty straightforward. In terms of what is required of you, you don't need to crack your head trying to figure out uh, what is this question asking me to do. It's pretty straightforward. There, there is a, a claim. There is a, 
there is a claim which is made. I'll call you back, okay? Bye. There is a claim uh, which is uh, made, and uh, the the claim is that the jury system is uh, anachron is anachronistic, right? Anachronism that is uh, something uh, which is, if you like, the outmoded uh, something which used to be uh, relevant or important many years ago, but now it is out of fashion. So that's the meaning of anachronism. Uh, and for that matter, uh, our judicial system uh, should not just, uh, you know, just take it as it is. Because that's why I say that can ill afford, right? The judicial system should not just, uh, our system should not just take uh, the jury uh, uh, approach or the jury system uh, as uh, it probably uh, used to be and all that because it is no longer, uh, you know, how it was, is no longer fit for purpose, if you like, uh, as it were. Now, you are asked to uh, take a position whether you agree that the jury system is out, uh, you know, out of fashion or is outmoded, or it's you know something uh, which is not fit for purpose now in our judicial system. Do you agree? And then when you have taken like the the position, uh, now if you look at the the first uh, uh, proposition that I could. There's a, something of a, a trick, right? The trick is towards the end. It says that uh, Ghana judiciarism can ill afford. So that is to say, to tell you that uh, is not that the, the, you are not ask, being asked to make a case for abolition of uh, jury system, right? It is is rather uh, an inv invitation for you to uh, recognize the challenges, the weaknesses, or the limitations in the jury system. And for that matter, you are able to prefer suggestions uh, with respect to how uh, those challenges can be addressed. I mean, that is essentially what we are supposed to do. And that is why uh, we are told that give reason for your answer. Yes, you agree that it's anachronistic. Why do why, why do you say that? Why shouldn't we just keep the jury system as it, it originally uh, uh, meant to be? You have to tell us the reasons. Now, having told us that, uh, now you need to help us to find solutions to those uh, problems so that the jury system will be tweaked or be modified or refined to make it relevant for our present needs. So that is basically what uh, the question is inviting us to do. And remember that uh, the jury uh, trial is very much part of the criminal justice system we inherited from uh, the English uh, uh, legal system and the, the, the common law tradition as a result of the colonial nexus or connection, as you very well know. And if you go back to uh, the original idea, uh, jury trial simply means like trial by peers. And for that matter, there's supposed to be some form of uh, popular, if you like, participation in uh, justice delivery that when there is an incident as whether someone has actually put up a behavior which violates the law, be it an aspect of a, a, a criminal law or be it an aspect of civil law. I mean, originally, uh, we allow uh, ordinary members of society to bring their own way of looking at things to bear and uh, look at whatever has happened and make a determination as whether they will consider what the person did as actually having uh, breached the law uh, or not. So this was like the general uh, idea. 
And uh, within that context, as you notice, we have uh, two aspects of trial. Uh, when you're having a trial, we have uh, trying to find out the relevant law and also trying to find out uh, what really happened, what did not uh, happen, what you call like the, the finding of facts, okay? So that one is in the area of evidence. So uh, we have, uh, if you like, a two uh, trial, the trial of facts, and then the trial of questions of law. So questions of law are reserved for the judge who is professionally trained to appreciate the nuances of the legal system. Then when it comes to the trial of facts, that is as whether something happened or something did not happen, as whether somebody did something uh, which the law says should not be done in order. That one is handled by the, the tribunal or the trial of fact. And that is where the, 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 the jurors or the jury uh, uh, come in. So that is the general idea. You can go back to the Magna Carta, the Glorious Revolution, and all that, if you wanted to uh, dig deep into history. But that is not really important for our present purposes. What uh, suffices to appreciate is that uh, the jury system is part of our legal system, but only in relation to aspect of criminal uh, 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 law, aspect of criminal offenses, as uh, you uh, notice. Uh, I mean, unlike uh, England and Wales, where even for some civil cases, including defamation, malicious uh, prosecution, uh, and things like that, uh, they still use, uh, and also fraud, they use a jury uh, trial, even those civil cases, as well as all indictable uh, offenses. But if you come to Ghana, we have actually, uh, 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 you know, scaled down the use of jury trial and use it for very uh, serious uh, criminal uh, uh, cases, uh, indictable uh, offenses as and also any offense which the Minister of Justice uh, may actually elect and all that. So if you look at the Constitution, right, at 19, uh, which contains like the fair trial rules, uh, we will be told uh, in clause two, paragraph A, and I quote that, a person charged with a criminal offense shall in the case of an offense other than the high treason or treason, the punishment for which is death or imprisonment for life be tried by a judge and jury. And where the punishment is death, the verdict of the jury shall be unanimous. And in the case of life imprisonment, the verdict of the jury shall be by such majority as parliament may by law prescribe." Unquote. So therefore, uh, our constitution has actually incorporated a jury system or jury trial in our uh, criminal justice system and where the punishment for the offense will be death uh, we need uh, unanimity that is now we have a seven member jury that's it in ghana right seven uh, jurors so we need uh, all the seven to agree that uh, the person is actually guilty and so on uh, before he can suffer uh, death. But where it is life imprisonment, uh, then majority as well may be prescribed. So uh, practically, you can have maybe five, at least you have five out of the seven uh, who will agree uh, that the person was guilty or, or, or otherwise, uh, as the case uh, may be. Now, I would like us to look at some of the arguments which are made by various writers and commentators uh, against the jury trial. And that is where you see the challenges, right, or the problems uh, which they actually uh, point to as being inherent in the, the jury uh, 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 system. And, and, and that is why uh, some may want to argue that if these are the problems, then let us uh, throw everything away. Let's scrap it. So I will look at some of these issues. Then when we finish, I will quickly uh, take you through some of the uh, uh, amendments 
uh, which are contained in the 2023 bill, uh, which the Minister for Justice uh, is introducing to Parliament for them to uh, reform the, 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 the jury uh, uh, trial in our criminal justice system. So some of the arguments, and uh, those of you who are on the platforms that uh, we have, uh, I think there are a few uh, relevant articles and then the uh, dissertation. For example, uh, Justice Dennis, I think when he did uh, his master's in 2014, uh, he did uh, a work on the jury uh, 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 trial. Uh, and the title is the uh, Ghana's Jury System on Trial. Uh, I think he has a very useful material there. And then the uh, the, the, the current uh, dean of the uh, University of Cape Coast, uh, uh, Julia Aite. Uh, Julia has also recently done an article in the Oxford uh, Commonwealth uh, Law uh, uh, Journal, uh, also trying to make a case uh, against uh, you know, abolition and rather saying that the jury system should be retained and then should rather be reformed if there are problems, address those ones. So I also like to uh, 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 look at that. And of course, uh, uh, my uh, former student, Mr. Daniel Cran, I think has also written a whole book on uh, jury uh, trial in Ghana. Yeah, so we have a lot of uh, materials if you wanted to uh, read more about. The ones that I have the PDF, in addition to uh, uh, what we are discussing, I will put them on the platforms for you. Okay, All right, thank you. Yeah, so uh, those who uh, advocate uh, the abolition of the jury trial in Ghana, uh, they make a, a, a number of complaints, including uh, maybe jury misconduct. Uh, jury misconduct here uh, can mean a whole lot of things. Either some juries may uh, make themselves to be uh, corrupted or, or some other untoward uh, behavior you can imagine. Uh, also, uh, undue media and public influence. The argument is that if you look at our system, okay, uh, I think those who follow the, uh, I think the OJ Simpson trial, uh, you notice that uh, I think the juries involved and all that uh, they were, uh, I think mean, some of the trial they were cut off from like from the world as it were. We didn't want like if you like them to be influenced by media discussions and all that. Now you have uh, jurors who are going through trial and who are sitting in a trial and the trial does not take uh, two or three days. And we don't have a special accommodation uh, for them uh, where uh, they are prevented from, let's say, uh, following the media. So in the morning, why on their way to court? Uh, they have Kokroko uh, on PCFM. They have a good morning show or whatever, all the, all the manner of the morning shows they are on the various media. Uh, discussing, let's say, the ongoing trial. And these are the people who are sitting as the jurors. And uh, the concern is that they could become uh, influenced by uh, some of these uh, discussion this, uh, on, on the media. So these are some of the things. And again, uh, unreasonable delay. Uh, unreasonable delay uh, a number of ways. Uh, you have a seven member uh, 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 jury. If uh, one of them is sick, one of them does not come, and so on and so forth, it will affect the trial. If the person is late, it will affect when the court will sit or start, and all that. So, and if you look at our current law, if uh, someone uh, dies or something happened to the person, uh, we have to uh, restart the whole process, right? We have to go through the process of uh, empaneling the jury again and so on and so forth. And these are some of the difficulties. And uh, incompetence uh, is also argued that uh, uh, the issue of incompetence, the incompetence here, a uh, number of uh, dimensions. Of course, uh, if you look at the law, uh, you are supposed to be have the, the, the English uh, speaking ability. But then question may arise, is it enough just to say that the person should be able to speak English? If you went to primary school, right? I'm, I mean, my, my daughter in the kindergarten, she can speak English and probably 
uh, even speaks it with a better accent than the way that I speak it, because I grew up in the village and she's growing up in the, uh, you know, in the in the city and the a privileged uh, circumstances. But does it mean that uh, a young girl, uh, you know, six years, five years, can speak very good English? Uh, is it enough? Of course, we have the age uh, limit uh, there. We have the age limit. If you look at the, the I think the, the current law is about the for, I think for 25 to uh, 60 years. But you notice that in the, the bill, the attorney general is trying to bring it to I think 18 years. And so that if you are 18 years and you can speak English and all that, uh, you should be able to serve as a, as a jury. But you notice that uh, even those who have a uh, you know, degree in English from the university, when we get to the courtroom contest, uh, they, I mean, they appreciate. I mean, uh, I think a few days ago, I was sitting somewhere having a, just a friendly chat with some friends, professors, and we're discussing something uh, legal. And uh, they were, you no. Know, I'm really uh, surprised that, despite the fact that they have like advanced uh, you know, competencies in their field, uh, they seem uh, not to understand uh, aspects of how the you know, the law operates and how the law is in order. So I mean, so that is uh, that is normal. Just as if you and I are taking to those uh, technical fields, which is not our field. We too will not appreciate. Uh, the same thing applies to uh, what we are talking about. So therefore, if you can speak English, that uh, per se is not enough for you to be sufficiently competent in appreciating the nuances of what of criminal trial and all that. So these are some of the things. But the argument is also that, as far as the, some will argue that when it comes to the incompetence, when the juries are being in panel, okay. Julius being in panel simply means that uh, during the trial, or maybe because, let me just give you a quick idea. According to the law, usually in May and November, the magistrates in the various places where there'll be jury trial, uh, usually within uh, four months around that, is supposed to generate uh, a pool, right? A pool that is a, a list of eligible uh, jurors, and they are there. Uh, so therefore, when criminal assizes, you know, we used to have what they call like criminal assize. That is when we are going to have a criminal trial in which uh, capital offenses like murder will be tried and we need like the jury. Uh, when the, the, the high court uh, is constituted about to do the criminal trial in the those uh, type of uh, offenses, there will be impaneling. And impaneling means that uh, you have to draw from the pool or you know, a box, you put the names of the eligible uh, jurors in the box, written on the papers in the box, so that you pull one at a time until you get uh, the seven. And you notice that uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the 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 juror, that the, you know, the, the person who is going to be uh, tried, that is the accused person, uh, he has what you call the, uh, the preemptory uh, right. He can object to uh the 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 juries when they are actually uh, uh proposed when the person's name is mentioned and uh you think that uh for whatever reason you don't even need to give a reason that's why it says it's peremptory uh you can just uh object that uh you do not want that person uh to be uh uh a jury in the case and you I think you can do that up to uh uh, uh three so when uh, as many as three, you can say that uh, uh, Vivian, no. Uh, Akwasi, no. Uh, Juliana, no. You don't have to give a reason why you do not want them to be uh, the jurors. Then after that, uh, there's what you call the challenge for course, right? So the first of course, then the peremptory challenge. Peremptory, that is, you, you, you just say that you object to no reason. Uh, but if, of course, we, after exhausting the three uh, peremptory uh, 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 challenges, if you want to object to any juror again, you must give a reason. 
uh, which will be inquired into by you know, the judge uh, before the objection will be upheld or will be disallowed. So therefore, uh, an argument is made that if uh, you think that uh, Jiro is incompetent and so on, he doesn't have sufficient understanding of English, or he's an uh, ex-convict, or any of the stated uh, grounds of disqualification, as the case may be, uh, you could uh, take that during the challenge for course, and that could be looked into. So uh, that is a, 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 a counter argument to this uh, point of uh, incompetence, which is leveled by those who are advocating for abolition of the jury trial. Uh, another argument which is made by those who uh, argue for abolition of uh, a jury, a jury system or jury trial is that it is laborious and uh, time uh, consuming. Just imagine, if you look at the paneling alone, right? How to generate the, the master list in the month of May and November. And then when it comes to the actual uh, uh, trial, how to empanel and all the, somebody can even say that, well, I object to this uh, person being a juror because of insanity. I think that this person is not mentally sound. So I don't want him to preside over my trial as a juror. And where the accused person has, for example, raised insanity as a ground for objecting to a proposed uh, juror, that will have to call for a whole lot of what inquiry because uh, every person is presumed to be what? Uh, sane. So, but it's also part of the accused person's right, uh, which is respected by Article 19, fair trial rules and all that. That if it thinks that, yes, uh, Mr. X or Madam uh, V, uh, you are uh, insane. So I don't want you to be uh, one of the jurors presiding over my trial. That is it. But the court will have to look into that. And that will also take uh, quite some time. So these are some of the downsides as far as the jury trial is concerned. Uh, of course, it's also time consuming, as I indicated. You have uh, seven, right? If there, for any reason uh, somebody is absent, the trial cannot go on. If for any reason, uh, let's suppose that you have uh, one of the jurors being like uh, a lady and the lady pr probably was pregnant. Because if you look at the law, the fact that you are pregnant is not a ground for you to be disqualified from being a juror. No. And let's suppose that the person delivered, right, uh, in the course of the trial, certainly when you deliver, uh, you need to spend time uh, playing a uh, nursing mother rule and, and things like that. And all these things will affect the trial uh, uh, process. Or even if something happened and uh, two or three cannot continue, Regardless of how far the trial has gone, you have to uh, restart the process. You have to start de novo, okay? And yeah, so these are some of the things. I was going to uh, uh, cite example for purposes of illustration, but I just remembered that uh, I'm not supposed to mention that example. Yeah, so uh, in terms of uh, payment, I think, uh, Juros are, are supposed to pay around 12 Ghana cities if that, that has not changed, unless there is any uh, court registrar here who can uh, provide information which contradict the, the current uh, payment. But that was in every day, uh, you are paid the 12 uh, 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 Ghana cities uh, as it were. And uh, once the trial is ongoing, okay, the jury must come to court every day. There are times that you may have probably uh, just a, a case uh, 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 management. You may just have maybe like just an aspect of a case management, but still, uh, the jury must be present and all that. And at some point, uh, they may have to be excused. Let's say during objection to evidence and all that. All these uh, operate to uh, slow down the, uh, the trial involving jury and also add to cost and also uh, inconvenience. So as I stated earlier on, when the jury is absent, no trial takes place. And if the jury is sick and the sickness is going to go on for a while, 
we have to get the 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 the, the, the team, you know, the panel of jury what reconstituted. So just uh, imagine that. And again, the Attorney General uh, may also delay uh, for one reason or the other. If there's a delay by the Attorney General, the jury must be uh, discharged till the Attorney General is ready. Under the law, the Attorney General can withdraw the charges. The Attorney General can uh, issue no prosecutor. And as soon as it does that, it can rearrest the person and get no... Or uh, so long because there has not been a pronouncement on whether you are guilty or not guilty, and so uh, no prosecutor or uh, withdrawal uh, of the charges will not serve as a bar because that will not operate as part of the double the rule against double jeopardy because uh, because the, the rule against double jeopardy operates with respect to utter for acquit and then utter for convey utter for acquit simply means that I have been tried and acquitted right on uh, the same. Uh, set of facts for similar, the same uh, charges and all that, so I cannot be uh, uh, tried again. Or I was convicted and uh, I have served my punishment and all that, so I cannot be tried again. Now, that does not apply to uh, where not only prosecutor, that is that when general has issued the, uh, a statement that, well, the state does not intend to continue the prosecution, that is not only prosecutor, or the state is abandoning or withdrawing the charges. If any of these things should happen, certainly the jury will have to be discharged. And just imagine if uh, the same facts and the same person is going to be you no know, process again and the process will be uh, uh, repeated. Imagine uh, the delay, the cost, and all the other uh, in, in, in inconveniences uh, involved. If you read uh, you no know, commentary by commentators uh, against a jury trial, Another observation which is made is that uh, the jurors, they sometimes find the trial boring, okay? And they fall asleep in the course of the trial. And that is true. That, that is true because if you are, you are, you are a juror, you, you are not supposed to speak. Of course, you have a, a foreman. The foreman can you speak through the foreman and then the foreman who's like the leader. Uh, or communicate with the judge if you have anything. But so 99% of the time, you are just supposed to just sit down, observe, listen, and watch. Uh, that can be quite uh, boring, isn't it? Especially if you get the, a trial, which is going on for a long, long, long time. And uh, some, you know, Practitioners, some practitioners who have been interviewed by uh, researchers uh, interested in the, the, the jury trial uh, point out that when lawyers are busy doing their process of mission, you, you look at the jury and then you find uh, you know, some of them dozing or sleeping. And only one or two may actively be listening. Another uh, concern uh, which those who do not support jury trial have is that uh, judges or the court itself uh, is also supposed to be uh, blamed, especially with respect to direction. As I indicated in the beginning, uh, during a trial involving uh, you know, the jury, we have two main uh, category of issues, matters or issues relating to the law, right? What's got the questions of law? And then matters or issues relating to uh, evidence, which are uh, questions of fact. Now, matters relating to evidence are within the proper realm of uh, judicial uh, authority and determination. But when the trial is over, it is also the duty of the judge to summarize the entire evidence and uh, give direction, right? Direction means that if you find this, then according to the law, uh, this is what uh, is supposed to be. So when you are deciding whether the person is guilty of count one or count two, 
uh, uh, you should pay attention to this because this is what the law says and all that. So the judge will have to give uh, you know, direction. But uh, researchers make the point that if you look at uh, murder cases, for example, you notice that most of the murder, uh, 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 no judgment for murder uh, trial that have been appealed to the appellate courts, uh, they usually have to do with how the judge handled the jury or how the judge directed the jury. And if the judge did not direct the jury properly, right, there's what you call misdirection. Or if the judge failed to direct the, ju uh, the, the jury on what they need to be directed, there's what you call the non-direction. So misdirection, non-direction will all have effect in exercising the mind of the appellate court in uh, reversing the decision of the trial uh, uh, judge. So, for example, if we look at the case of Atiemo against Commissioner uh, of Police, the Supreme Court in Holding One uh, made an observation uh, which is relevant to the point we are uh, seeking to uh, uh, converse that uh, the way the judge also handled the jury is also to be blamed for the satisfaction with the jury system. So, let me quote uh, what is in the Holding One of uh, Atiemo and Commission of Police, quote, where a judge is sitting quiet alone as a tribunal of facts, the principles applicable to a summing up to a jury or to directions to assessors do not apply. For there is no necessity to give assistance to laymen on the legal points involved in the case and on each side version of facts in relation to those uh, legal uh, uh, points. If there is evidence before the trial judge, which he accepts to found a conviction, an appeal court will not interfere without a uh, conviction, uh, unquote. So in a sense, the Supreme Court in Atiemo against Commission of Police, trying to uh, you know, just oppose uh the you know how easy and convenient judge sitting alone trial over where you have a judge with the with the jury with the judge the jury admittedly the jury they are laymen right people not trained in the law so uh the summing up is crucial because as we know uh, if you are doing a trial, is a law and evidence. So you are going to help them with the law, and then you present it in a way which wants to enable them to be able to, uh, you know, apply their mind to the evidence uh, in relation to the law and come to the appropriate word, conclusion. So therefore, where the judge does not properly direct the jury, when he makes a decision, and the decision is uh, appeal to the Court of Appeal or to the Supreme Court, as the case may be, it is going to result in the reversal of the of the conviction, as it were. So let's keep that uh, in mind. So the argument is made that if you look at reported cases on murder trial, uh, which has gone on appeal, you notice that invariably, uh, the appeal result in reversal of the judgment. And for that matter, it is argued by uh, the protagonists, I mean, the, I mean those who are uh, uh, I mean, the opponents, sorry, the opponents of a jury trial, those who are against the jury trial, uh, that uh, because of some of these uh, relatives, the what is the point of having the jury trial scrap it? So these are some of the the, you know, the problems. These are some of the, the, the challenges associated with the, the jury trial. And let me also add that in this day and age, when we even have a social media, okay, uh, it even compounds the already existing conundrum because uh, the case that they're sitting on as a juror, 
let's say it's being actively discussed on a Telegram uh, platform where the jury is uh, a member or on the WhatsApp platform or somebody has done something on it on a TikTok, uh, Instagram, uh, whatever, uh, Facebook, YouTube. So the jury is getting bombarded with all manner of interpretation of what happened in the case from all these discussions. And uh, what the, the, the jury may actually arrive at at the end of the trial may not be a true reflection of his own genuine understanding and convictions regarding what the case is. So these are some of the points. Now let's look at the, 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 the flip side uh, of the coin, the other side of the coin. Uh, those who support retention of a jury trial in Ghana uh, and also support that uh, we should uh, modify it uh, because uh, the jury trial has enormous uh, benefit for society. Uh, they canvass uh, some of these points uh, in uh, support of their position. Uh, that the right to jury trial is an important indicator of democratic nature of a country. What is democracy? Democracy uh, is the rule of the people by the people, isn't it? Democracy is about popular participation in governance. And uh, adjudication is an aspect of democracy because as human beings, uh, we are bound to have a disagreement. A certain conduct may put up, uh, which uh, some may think that is against the law. The law says that don't kill another person. Well, somebody uh, ended up uh, killing. Or let's take the, the case of... Uh, I think I was watching the I think the CNN uh, this morning or last night, and I I came across this story that the FBI have shot dead someone who threatened to uh, who threatened to harm President Biden. So when they were trying to arrest the person, uh, they had challenges with how to shoot the person to and, and the person died. So let's assume that we had that situation in Ghana. Someone has threatened to harm the president. And then our national security uh, operatives are attempting to arrest a person and they have to actually uh, 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 kill him by you know, shooting him. Uh, let's say it becomes a, a hot topic for the society and the attorney general will have to uh, let it be taken up, let's say, as a homicide, as a, a murder case. So let's get uh, lay men, uh, non-judicial uh, people, non-lawyers to sit down and uh, look at what happened. Would they say that the behavior of those who shot this person who are threatening to kill or harm the president to death, does that amount to what we call murder under our law? So uh, we have popular participation in democracy and those who support jury trial argue that uh, that is a, a very uh, effective way of also giving effect to democracy. And especially when it comes to uh, maybe our part of the world, uh, where we talk so much about uh, democracy, an argument is made that jury trial brings it very uh, home, very close to us. Because that one, we have equal uh, chances of participating in the uh, justice administration, especially if we look at how jurors are selected and also how they are in panel. And regardless of, if you talk about the, uh, you know, Article 17, the uh, equality uh, clause of the Constitution and then the anti-discrimination clause, uh, that we are all equal before the law and all that. When it comes to jury trial, I think we get the concrete expression of that because uh, whether you are the, you are the, the the tallest you are the shortest you are the richest you are the well educated you are whatever if you are charged with an offense uh which is triable by a judge and the jury uh we are going to use uh people uh who for example you know they may not be very educated like you they may not be very rich like you 
they may not even come from your tribe. They may be white, they may be black. So there's no you know, discrimination when it comes to like the, 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 the jury trial, as it were. And for that matter, some people say that that is really what gives meaning to democracy and that should be retained rather than scrapped. And again, the point is also made that uh, jury system is uh, built on democratic principles, I've explained, and it has stood the test of time. So if the thing is not uh, broken, why do you fix it? As some people say it, that uh, for many years, uh, the jury trial uh, has been uh, there. So don't uh, just you know, scrap it. Probably we can modify it, we can tweak it, uh, reconfigure it to uh, reflect the, the needs of our time and also address challenges of our time and make it more useful rather than just scrapping it uh, all together. And uh, they, they say that we should always go back to uh, the origins of the jury trial. Let's go back to the, even like the common law. If you remember the history of like the evolution of the, the common law, the itinerary judges, right? And then the, 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 the trial by peers, you go to a community, they will assemble some of members of the community during the sizes to use members from the community themselves to help to adjudicate. So they say that uh, that is like a popular participation of the ordinary people in justice delivery. And in fact, if you come to Ghana, if you want to even extend the argument, one will say that the fact that uh, during Rawlings's led uh, uh, you know, revolution, so-called, because some people uh, disagree with that it is a revolution, but at least that's how it is called. In the uh, 1981, uh, you know, uh, when uh, they introduced what they call like the public tribunal system, okay? The public tribunal system, which made its way even into the Cause Act, 1993. Uh, we have like the, the, you know, the district, tri the community tribunal, circuit tribunal, and then the regional tribunal. And of course, uh, for many years now, uh, the original tribunal, because it's just in the constitution is an entrenched, uh, it's not actually operationalized for many years now. So it's just there in the books. But going back to what made the government at the time introduce the public tribunal system, I think that uh, it really echoes some of the sentiments which uh, probably led to the jury trial, because the idea of the you know, the public tribunal, the community tribunal, was not was to take if we like justice delivery strictly from uh, no 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 to, to take it you know, from just professional judges, and that is why you have like a chairman, all right, a chairman of the panel, and the chairman will be like let's say a professional uh, 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 judge or trained lawyer. And the other panel members are just lay people within the community. And the same thing applies to the circuit tribunal and then the regional tribunal. So uh, an endorsement of the idea that uh, justice uh, administration should be in the hands of the ordinary people who make up society. Yeah, so these are some of the arguments which uh, are made. Now let's uh, briefly look at uh, uh, what we have under the uh, the new uh, 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 legislation. That is the, of course, not the, it's, it's not, uh, I, I, I don't think it's in pass yet, but it's going through the process. The the proposed bill by the, the Minister of Justice, the Attorney General, to reform the, uh, the jury system. Uh, so if you look at the, the bill, uh, you will notice uh, that in terms of the qualifications, some important changes are being made. As I told you, if you look at the original uh, Act 30, right? If you look at Act 30, that's the criminal offenses, uh, uh, criminal offenses, uh, 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 criminal procedure, uh, act, that is Act 30. If you look at that uh, legislation, you notice that 
uh, to you have to be at the 25 years, okay, before you qualify to be selected as a juror and not more than 60. Now, in the new law, which is uh, proposed, the age is reduced to 18. So uh, if you are 18, uh, you qualify to be uh, a, a juror. Of course, uh, that is as in consistent with the emerging trend. Uh, the Children's Act and also the investor does suffrage of the... If someone can participate in electing the president and the, the lawmakers in the country, it means the person is sufficiently matured, 18 years. So why can't that person also uh, participate in uh, administration of justice as a juror? So I think that is the justification for bringing the age down to uh, 18. And again, uh, if you look at the Companies Act 2, if someone is 18 and he qualifies to be a director, so if someone can be a director of a, you know, a big company and all that, why can't he be a, a juror? So I think there's some uh, 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 wisdom in this uh, proposed uh, legislation. Then the person must also be resident in the Republic. Uh, so being resident in the Republic is not necessarily the same as being a citizen, isn't it? Uh, of course, you must understand the English language. But this is where, uh, in my view, there may have to be some other uh, modification. I don't know what you think. Uh, so as to address the problem of the those who say that it's not enough to be able to speak English. Probably. Uh, should we also say that uh, the person should have a, a certain verifiable competency in English language? But if you are not careful too, and you also emphasize that, is that you are also undermining the original concept of the of the jury, because the original concept of the jury is a trial by peers, and the peers here means uh, every member of society, lay people, as it were. So it's quite uh, it's quite tricky. Another interesting development, of course, which will also speak to some of the challenges that you have seen, is that if you look at the old law, if someone was serving as a juror and he attained the age of uh, sixty, right? The law says that you know more than sixty. The accused person could take up a point that this person is not competent to continue to uh, serve on the on the panel of jury because it's 60 years, uh, 60 years plus some few days. Now, what that means is that it's going to affect the, the trial. If the trial, maybe if about uh, 15 witnesses have been called, as left with just one witness for the whole trial to end, what it means is that everything will have to start all over. Everything will have to start all over. They'll have to be like a trial de novo when we reconstitute like the, the jury. But now, uh, the proposed law is saying that even if someone attains uh, 60 years, right, uh, in the course of the jury trial, uh, it will not disqualify him. He shall continue to serve as a jury in the trial until the trial is what is concluded. Uh, then we also have another important amendment, which is supposed to address. So now what we are doing now, if you are following the proposed law, that is the bill, the things there to a large extent address the, 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 the problems which have been identified with the jury trial. And that is an answer to the second uh, component of the question. So pay attention to what we are doing. So another uh, proposal, uh, which addresses some of the problem, uh, it, it has to do with the uh, uh, clause 15 of the new bill, which seeks to amend section 241. And so the new law will be this, that where from the absence of, a, 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 where from the absence of a witness or any other reasonable cause to be recorded in the proceedings, the court considers it necessary advisable to adjourn a trial. The court may adjourn the trial for a period not exceeding 14 days and on terms that the court considers fit. 
or by warrant, remand the accused to a uh, prison or any other place of security. So here too, uh, if you look at the old law, there's a, some kind of like a gap. Uh, like if the the some you know, a jury is absent and so on and so forth, uh, what happens with the trial? How long can it be adjourned and so on? Now we have like a clear uh, timelines uh, which have been suggested. And also what should happen to the accused person? The accused person may be remanded to prison or he may be kept in any other place of security. You can even put under house arrest if the trial is going to take a, a long time and so on and so forth. Again, uh, when it comes to the composition, uh, in, we know that in Ghana we use a seven uh, a member jury, okay? That one has not changed. But what is being added to the law now is a very important addition because of what you'll be discussing that if one of the jurors, for example, should be sick, should die, or for any reason is unable to continue, uh, is going to affect the trial. You have to restart the whole process and all that. Now that is being addressed in the proposed law. So if you look at clause 16 of the bill, it seems to amend section 24, 244 of the current Act 30. And it says that the, 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 in the case trouble the jury, the trial shall be conducted with the jury comprising seven jurors and B, three additional persons acting as alternate jurors. And this is a very important addition. Uh, three additional persons acting as alternate jurors. So these are standing by, okay? So that if a juror is absent for you know, a number of days or whatever, you don't need to restart the process. You can just uh, you know, put another person in as a substitute, as it were, to get a full complement of the, of, of, of the jury uh, panel. So let's uh, look at uh, that. And probably uh, that those of you who love company law. In company law, you know, we have what you call a substitute directors, okay? That's why the fact that they use the word alternate uh, jurors here is not equivalent of alternate directors. So please, nobody should think of alternate directors. But substitute directors would be like a, a good, uh, if you like, analogy. Because substitute directors in company law is where you have a, a, a director, right, who is named as a deputy for a substantive uh, director. And now when the substantive director is uh, not available, then the deputy director will step into his shoes right away. And he is, is part of the, if you like, the, the directors as it were. But unlike alternate directors, where uh, a director is going to be unavailable for a period of in six months, he appoints someone to uh, stand in for him. So that's just an arrangement by that director. But these are just, by the way, it's not part of uh, the jury discussion. Good. Yeah, so uh, in terms of, uh, you know, replacing uh, a juror with an alternate juror. So section 17, uh, I mean, clause 17 of the new bill effectively amend, adds a new uh, a provision to Act 30. And the new addition will be uh, section 244A. So that's why they've added the A to it. Because the 244 is already there, but we are going to have like an additional uh, provision. And it gives us a details as to how you can replace uh, a jury who is uh, uh, absent or is unable to continue. So the first scenario, in the case, tribal with the jury, each juror shall attend the trial until the conclusion of the trial. So that is a preferred or the ideal situation. Two, an alternate juror in a trial shall attend the trial until the conclusion of the trial, but shall not participate in the deliberation of the jury. So here, the three alternate, additional alternate jurors, they will attend trial just like the uh, substantive jurors, right? And, and there's a wisdom in insisting that the additional uh, alternate jurors should attend trial because if there is a, maybe the need for one of them to uh, join and replace uh, another person who is absent or whatever, he he's part of the trial in terms of following the, you know, like the trial understands the case and all that. So there'll be no question of 
uh, if you are substituting uh, 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 know someone, this person has not followed the evidence. How will you understand? So that one is addressed. So that is like the wisdom in this uh, new proposal. Uh, then if you are alternate direct, uh, sorry, no alternate direct, alternate juro uh, in the trial, you shall not be absent from the trial for more than two days. So you want to make sure that you follow the trial closely. So just in case we need to uh, substitute uh, you for someone, you fully understand uh, the case. Now, what are some of the, uh, the instances in which uh, a juror may have to be replaced with an alternate uh, juror? Uh, maybe grounds of ill health, the, uh, by reason of death, or maybe due to any other reason, uh, which the court consider it necessary to replace uh, the juror with an alternate juror. That should be fine. And, and, and if you look at this provision, it's really good because if a jury, for example, has misconducted himself, and that point comes to the attention of the court, and the court establishes it, and the court is satisfied that it is true that a jury has misconducted himself, it will just be a simple matter of uh, removing that jury and then putting one of the uh, uh, you know, alternate jurors there. And this will not disrupt the trial, and there'll be no need for you to you know repeat the process as it were. So let's keep that in mind. Yeah, so uh the attorney juror, I mean, he'll go through the same process that the juror will be sworn and then he'll perform his duties uh, as it were. Good. So uh these are uh Okay, maybe another important uh, addition, which I shouldn't skip. Uh, you know, we made the point that an accused uh, person during the impaneling, he has the right to challenge proposed uh, jurors, right? And we said that uh, with respect to the uh, peremptory challenge, the peremptory challenge that is challenging without uh, giving any reason, just say that I object. You don't have to give any reason. You can do up to three, right? Now, in the new law, I think uh, it's going to be uh, four. You can object to three substantive uh, proposed jurors without giving any reason. And you can also object to one of the proposed uh, additional alternate jurors without uh, giving any reason. So that is the, the maybe the, the new addition to the law if the bill were to be passed. And if you reflect on all this, uh, you notice uh, that uh, it the, the new law seems to address most of the problems that we've been uh, discussing. And uh, clause 19 is very important, which seems to amend uh, section 257 of the Act 30. And it, it, it speaks to uh, where a juror uh, is absent uh, and cannot attend 30 days, the juror is not showing up, then uh, the court will have to direct that that absentee juror for up to 30 days should be replaced with an alternate uh, uh, juror, as uh, the case may be. And uh, the jury, anytime uh, we have uh, the jury uh, reconstituted, uh, I think the, the jury will have to be re-sworn, but it will not affect uh, the trial uh, of the case uh, as it were. Okay, so these are, uh, in a nutshell, some of the things that you need to be thinking uh, about if you want to discuss the question on the jury, uh, which I picked from the 2018 uh, paper. So just before I leave you, if you have any question, uh, I will take it. If you want to speak, uh, just put up your hand and you'll be giving the mic or just use the chat. Okay. Uh... Uh, okay, let me see. Yeah, uh, Vincent, go ahead.
Vincent. Uh, okay, let me see. You can unmute yourself now, but make sure the only one person is unmuted. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, go ahead. Oh, Vincent, I thought your hand was up. Hello, sir. Yes. Yes. I... We, we cannot hear you. I think your hand is up, but we cannot hear you. Uh, I can barely hear you. So if your connection is not, we can use the chat to state your question, okay? Yeah. Oh no, I think we've lost him. Yes, any other? Otherwise I'm going to end and see. Okay, someone that the jury as we have to be a learned person of the law. No, uh, Valerie, the jury person uh, does not have to be. In fact, uh, if you look at the law, we have like exemptions, okay? So the president, the vice president, uh, I think the I know, ministers, um, the superior court uh, judges, they are all going to be now under the law now magistrates are also exempted but in the proposed law uh i think that it doesn't uh, exempt them but i think they should be exempted and uh, some uh no civil and uh, no security uh agencies you no know, prison police and so on they are all exempted so you don't have to be like a, a learned person in the law uh, valerie to qualify as a jury yes ramatu um, Doug, good afternoon. So my question is, how is the judgment made? Is it made from taking the consideration of only the jury or the judge who also has a part in playing? I don't really know how it works. Okay, so uh, the jury try, as I said, uh, as whether someone is guilty or not guilty, right? It is the, the jury or the jurors who are supposed to reach that decision. The judge's role is to help the, the, the jurors to understand the evidence and then the relevant law. But they will have to go and think through the evidence in the light of the law, which I'll be explained to them by the judge, and then make a decision as whether in their view, the person is guilty on count one or not guilty. So when the the jury return a verdict that the person is not guilty, then the judge will have to acquit the person. Where the, the jury return a verdict of guilty, then the judge will have to convict the person. Of course, when it comes to the, the punishment, uh, if it's murder, it's, you know, it's death, it's there already. It's not for anybody to decide. The punishment is just one. If it's life imprisonment, too, it's also there. So there's no uh, dispute as to the the you no know, the, the sentencing. Except where maybe uh, an appeal is made, and then the court to say that uh, due to certain things, uh, we find a problem with uh, this and all that. So instead of maybe like a life sentence, we've reduced it to uh, this particular number of years and so on. But Essentially, uh, during the jury trial, it is uh, the, the role of the jury or the jury to uh, make uh, findings of fact or conclude on the facts as whether the person did it, did not do, whether it's guilty or not guilty. And as whether particular defense uh, is acceptable or not acceptable. All that the judge will do is to explain the law uh, to the jury. Any other, otherwise in three minutes, I will end the class. Yes, tell me. Good afternoon.
afternoon. You're allowed to. Good afternoon. Please. Yes, I think the statement that you made, um, you said all that the judge will do is to direct the jury. So if they come out with um, a verdict, I don't know if that's the right word to use, right. or a verdict, and it is, it is wrong, what happens? Let's say it's, uh, it's unjust, then what well, happens? Yeah, if you're a judge, you can only... Uh... You can cry, you can you know, make all the noise, but you cannot change the verdict of the jury. Okay. Thank you, Your Lordship. Right. I think my next question would be um, the, the specific name of the amendment, um, the uh, proposed bill. Well, I think it's, um, what do you call the criminal? Let me get the full title for you. Uh, okay, so let me share this with you. Uh, look at the screen. And so this is the Criminal and Other Offenses uh, Procedure Amendment Bill 2023. Uh, yeah, so that that is the that is the. That is a bill, okay? Yes, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll also put it on the platform for you. That is the bill. Yes, please. Thank you, Your Lordship. All right. Uh, I think, uh, Ben, you said I kindly mentioned the act again. I think I've mentioned the act. And please mention the specific amendment that's have been made. Okay. Now, let me uh, clarify this. Uh, I am not, I don't think that the bill has been passed, right? It's going through the process. It's going through the process, but it's not been passed yet. So let's keep that in mind. And what I discussed with you are proposed changes in the law contained in this bill. Yeah, so let's keep that in mind. But as I said, uh, this issue of jury is an interesting issue. So therefore, uh, and it's been a question before in 2018, so there's nothing wrong if you uh, think through it and you're able to speak to it properly, assuming you are lucky to have a, a question like that. Okay, so on that note, let me see, there's some other chats. Yeah, so somebody is saying that since the bill has not been passed, is it safe to reference it in exams? Okay, that's a good question. So if the question, let's say that if the question is just like the one that uh, we said, okay, that uh, what reforms uh, will you suggest? So the things in the bill that we have discussed, right, are uh, some useful reforms which you can suggest. And without even, uh, uh, even, without even uh, knowing the exact uh, you know, clauses of the bill, that's not important. What is important is that to address uh, some of these problems of jury being absent and so on and so forth, we can have this concept of uh, uh, additional alternate uh, jurors uh, who should also follow the trial just like the substantive jurors so that if there is absence, uh, we can uh, let one of them replace. And you are uh, happy to also note that in a bill uh, which uh, is being introduced by the, the attorney general to reform the law, and this particular thing is also there, so, you know, you can speak in, in that uh, uh, language and you are not really stating it as like the law, no. So the current law is just what we have in the Act 30. But this bill is, uh, is supposed to uh, you know, amend or reform aspects of it. Okay. Uh, let me see what else. Okay, I think we've addressed all the issues. So have a very good uh, afternoon. And then 
in the night, if I have the time, I'll come in line. So if you are lucky to see me online, you can join. Otherwise, uh, I'll put my recordings on the Ghana Law uh, TV for you to access on the YouTube later. Have a good afternoon.